Hello and welcome to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. Today I'll be talking to Adam. Adam is all the way from Turkey. He started his journey in a, you know, a renowned farm with his parents, where he grew, where he grew up, and went on to come, decided to start off his hairdressing at the age of 11. He started as a barber and cut, was cutting people's hair, but he excelled at that. Adam always knew living in Turkey in Istanbul was not enough. He wanted to come over to England, London to really specialize on this and grow his business. He didn't just do that. He went on to do bigger and better things, but I won't talk much about him. I want you to meet him and let's get to know Adam. Hello everyone again, welcome to Painless Universal Conversation with myself and Welsh. As I previously mentioned in my introduction, this is a gorgeous and really, I, if you haven't been to his hair saloon, I think I recommend it for everyone to go. Adam, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm really good actually, I'm excited to talk to you. I have a really good morning actually. Yes. And how is, so it? how is it? How is it where you are? Where are you today? Are you um, in the hair salon? Do you have to do it now? No, lockdown is semi over. Um, so um, I start this morning at 6.30. I done two clients at home. So we have to do a little bit home, little bit salon. Hmm. And because of the distancy and the, the number of the people and stuff, I have to do one of my clients early morning. I've done it, I just came back home. So I'm at home until two and then I'm going to head into salon. And then I've got another six clients from two to eight this afternoon. Wow, it's busy. Um, anyway, before we get into any of that, because um, your work is so amazing, just who you are is just something that's um, breathtaking to talk about. But one okay. thing I want to go into is first is that you come from the humble be uh, beginnings and you've always maintained who you are. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about who is Adam? Adam is, um, so basically coming from small town in Turkey, from the sea level up north in Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, so my family over 90s, they were producing uh, hazelnut. Mm -hmm. So I grew up like a family, family, family. So like we always been producing hazelnut, other like uh, potatoes and all those things. I'm a farmer boy. Wow. And how did you get that love of hairdressing? When did you first get, in, when did you have first have a scissors in your hand to get that love for it? And so 1990, when I turned in five and then we have a family bankrupt and then we have to continue working as a farm. And then I started my primary school up in a forest, like a small village. When I turned 11 years old, and then my family asked me, like, Adam, what are you gonna do? You will be working with farmer or you're gonna continue work? That was school and stuff. So I was a smart student. So I didn't like my <laughs> like homeworks and stuff. All, my, all the time, my sister was doing my homework. Mm. And then my auntie's son, he was a barber in the city. I said to my family, I went to work with my cousin as a barber. Mm. Then at the point I moved to the city, I started working as an apprentice, mm. age of 11. So that's the fell in love with hairdressing. So as soon as you went, um, you went to the city, uh, in Istanbul, yeah. Simple. When you were there and you first had the first haircut, can you imagine, was this a feeling that I like doing this and I think I'm going to stick with it or was it circumstances that made you fall in love with it? I think it's the both. So because there were no choice, I have to work and then also I have to learn the skills mm -hmm. and then I didn't realize because there are certain concerns we have a little bit bankrupt and our family matters and stuff. Mm. And I've been keep doing working with my cousin shop about like three years and I'm turning 14. I didn't know. My teacher told me, she's a lovely woman, he said, Adam, you have a skills for long hair. Why don't work for ladies salon? So she recognized my skills and then I moved to hairdressing. First I started barbering. I was cutting boys hair. So, yeah. Oh, wow. So, Christian. And you, you found this talent. You knew that this is not enough. I'm not stopping here. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, yes, I, 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 
when this lady recognized your talents and said you should start cutting ladies' hair and you started that journey, but you went on to say, okay, I can't stay here because this is not enough. I need to move over to somewhere else where I could be more recognized. Where yeah. did you you because I you know I see so many hairdressers but they're so contented where they are but with you you said uh, this is not enough I need to go on to even bigger what yeah. you on? what where, when did you see that talent in you um so basically I love passion about hair I can't stop doing hair I can't look stop looking at hair whatever I go to bus or train airplane in the car I look the all the time hair and then look the shaves and what's the suitable woman and the beauty is always drive me to that passion. I want to make delivery best as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's why I moved to Istanbul, age of 14, from my hometown to Istanbul is another 11 hours drive. So age of 14, I moved to Istanbul. Mm -hmm. So then I start working a big salon about that there's 80 people working there. So I was a, the youngest person in the salon and then working every day non-stop wow and yeah. and then you decided okay i'm coming over to london and actually not that easy no it wasn't no 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 no, no. so enjoy your <laughs> this is a uh, joy because one of the things we focus on we talk about pain and pain comes in all states and sides and people think it's just chronic illness pain i said no it's not chronic illness pain we talk about pain of transitioning, of, yeah. me, of finding your joy. You wanted to be a renowned hairdresser. Yeah, obviously, yeah. You where you were, you were doing great, but you needed more. So, yeah. what's your journey of wanting more and, and achieving that more? How did you yeah. do that? So, from Istanbul to a London journey where <laughs> it's quite difficult, it wasn't easy because my background is that we are Turkish and I have like Greek and Turkish plus um, Ukrainian and Georgian mix of my blood. But I carry in Turkish passport. Coming to UK, not easy because we are not the EU. Okay. The, there were visa problem, the language problem. I didn't speak English at all. No. So back to Istanbul, I was working seven days a week and then 12 hours every day. And then going to evening college, learning English about, um, so starting eight in the evening until 10.30 every single day, I am going to college nonstop. And then I live in like a, just myself, like a 14 years old boy. So trying to some learn a little bit English, but I love to go to England, which is, that was my dream. I want to be middle of the world, which is London is I think capital of the world for me and the fashion as well. So always in my mind, always keeping that. There is a yes pain a lot, but it, that me allowed to take me over. Just want to fight for it. Wow. So tell yeah. me money. And you finally made it to London, right? Yes, I finally made it to London. I'm in here now, British citizens, eight years. Yeah, I'm a winner of the headrest, and as you know, last year. Yes. And my business is very established. I'm working now all of the world clients. Just, I can't tell you. It just, just works really well. But there is a lot of pain. But I didn't allow me to control. I control the pain. That's very good. So um, you came to London and you went on to win the L'Oreal Hairstyle and uh, Coloring Award. How yes. did you get? How did you know about that to even go about to win that award? Was it because you were in the right mix? How did you start getting your name out when you came to London? So it's a, it's a, there's a way, there's a, thanks to the, I have to say, um, my family here with the team, we work in Salon, Aero that was Salon. Mm -hmm. Also our industry L'Oreal sponsor a massive competition in the world. Mm -hmm. So there is the way you can apply and then they will recognize your skills. They allow you to, you can show your skills front of them. And then in the judges in the UK, I think they are, they, I will say, just like diva. Does that make sense? Correct, yes. The hair industry, the hair industry. So there were 14 judges and then they were looking my look because I was doing for upcoming style 2019. So I did total look. 
and then they recognize my skills and they say this is the best in the area and then we're going to go final and then grand final and we win the competition wow that's fantastic Congratulations. in the back you have to do a lot of uh, move points and then presentation just kind of like your passion is drove you farther and far you just move forward never back and Cutting women's hair, what are the first thing you look for when you, when you see a woman? And you, I remember when you first met me, you always said to me, Anne, I could do your hair, I could cut your hair. What is yeah. it when you see a woman you look for? I looked a woman always in the face. I think whatever you have in your body, your watches, your I mean, bags and stuff, you as a person representing, that's the first look. Mm -hmm. And then that's fresh shape. Everything tells me to deliver it to you. The fashionable color, fashionable cut, style. That's mm -hmm. where I can start. Then everything, the rest of Because your hair is your biggest accessory, the biggest of your diamonds. Mm -hmm. Whenever you go home, you put your clothes away, put your watches away, put your bags away, but your hair's with you wherever you go. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Has for me is I think one of the godness gifts for women. Yeah, it is. I agree. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. And the pandemic has been awful. We've seen that. I've you know we've all witnessed it and it's affected so many different sectors. It doesn't matter what sector you are in. Um, yeah. Actually, have to be closed down for many many months. It's now just been reopened not too long ago. I think a couple of days ago. Yeah. How has your industry um, been able to deal with this um, pandemic and how have, you managed or how have you managed to move on from it? Well, the pandemic is just hit us really hardly. So we closed on March 16th until the July 4th. Still, we can't really deliver our services because it's a limited time and then a lot of distance, which is great for safety. Yeah, it just caused so much problem. And all the time I'm, I was connected with my clients and I was telling them, I was explaining them how you can manage their hair, from, but don't color yourself. <laughs> don't cut them themselves. So yeah, most of the time I was contacting my clients. Now I'm working almost 24 hours. I still have only four hours last night and then I start this morning 6.30. Oh, wow. You're going back to your old days when you started uh, at the beginning. Yeah. So what are the new procedures that you was, you're seeing now, now that everything is open? What are the new procedures you're going to be putting in place to make sure that um, clients are safe? Um, because this is your, you're a renowned hairdresser. You do this. But obviously, you still want more and more people coming to you. So what are the new procedures that you're going to put in place? Firstly, um, I've done two ice ties to myself and then I protect myself firstly. And then I also now we wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Of course, we wear a visa as well, covering our face and stuff and um, all time gloves. And personally, just doing by one by one my clients. I don't really like missing rounds. Mm -hmm. Just like kind of VIP service I'm doing, which is I was doing before. Now just one to one. Okay. Yeah. So, and then is also of course the distance between the clients and then assistants. Just everything really, really looking after the clients. Their safety is really really important. Mm. You know, in every pandemic, one thing I've always also found is that there's also opportunities. Have you seen any room, any kind of opportunities that has come out of this pandemic? Yes, I did. What I'm seeing now is a hygiene is the main thing for hairdressers, mm. definitely. And other things, you have to be mentally strong with this. That's the opportunity looking after your clients and then keep working and keep connecting with them. That's the, for me, biggest opportunity rather than collecting monies and stuff. If you strong mental and then looking after your illness, everything moving forward. Yeah. One of the things you said um, is that your focus has been built and building, building a reputable and international hairdressing. When you yeah. 
yourself where you are today? How do you think you've achieved that? And are you excited about where you are now? Do you know, um, sometimes I sit down and I'm like, where I'm coming from and where I am now, I done, yes, I'm learning every single day. It doesn't stop me. And um, I have now, I think, 15 young kids, new generation, they grow in. They say, how we can we work together? How we can learn something? So I'm so happy to be seeing them. And then I'm just inspiring them. I want to be inspiring them as well. So young generation, they are our future. Yeah. yeah. And you also quote about time. And now with the pandemic, I've seen you said you only had four hours sleep. You said your biggest, um, my biggest issue I have in this world is my time. Uh, yeah. Because I, I never know how to... Um, you know, I don't have enough of it. In, in sight of everything that happened with the pandemic, with coronavirus, how have you been able to teach yourself the value of time and how to now manage time? Because now time has taught us that, you know, no matter how fast we rush, when life slows us down, it really does slow us down and we have no choice, we just have to relax. In that time you took out to relax and reflect, what have you now learned about that time that was always your challenge? So between that time, I learned, I think we need to look after ourselves and medication a lot and just spend more time ourselves. I said, yes, four hours I slept, which is not all the time happening, but we need the balance for everything. We need to know the limits and education, education, education ourselves a lot. And our body is just non-stop can deliver one day just leave us for no reason mm. but we need to be blended with the natural the mother nature is just there we need to connect them more yes does that make sense it does it does it does so your words of advice to a young person looking looking up to you wants to start a business like you have and you know wants to go on to win awards like you have but not sure where. What advice would you give um, a young person, a very young person looking up to you about the hairdressing industry, about being the best at what you do and attracting yeah. I think uh, my advice, where, that's my, I shouldn't say advice, I think my experience, where I'm coming from, well, there is no limit. They never sit back, just move forward, always, follow the opportunities there is a lot of opportunities mm. never stop just say able to do anything if something's come from your way for hairdressing industry move just move forward because when you sit down it doesn't come to you anything mm. you have to keep working hard work is to pay the bill honestly so you have to keep working just keep working and try and aim for this opportunity and they'll find yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Universals always bring you, always, always positive things. Yeah. You know, that's, I'm training myself as a, like my brain. Mm. Always positivity. Put your mind like 80% positive things. Your brain's full of like 80% positive. It's delivering you to a positive around you. Mm. And if you watch like dramas and all those things put in your mind and actually you're t pulling your energy down rather than putting positivity, positivity is the best thing in your to bring up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Our final message is, uh, um, is one of hope. Um, with everything that's gone on, we always think about what is a message of hope that you give to anyone whose um, business has not recovered the way they thought it would recover. You've been lucky. You still got your clients kind of returning and not being scared about it. There's some, so many people out there. I'm not quite sure about um, now the future. What's your message of hope? Um, well, my great for hope is the rest of the year. Or oh, hopefully, hairdresser will can show the world can we get back to new normal quickly. Actually, yes. Oh, wow. So, because hairdresser is part of some family, part of human, and we are very close to our clients. We just delivering for the happiness. We're making the magic as possible. You know, as soon as we done one of our clients, just simple things, blow dry.
they feel good. They feel glamorous. They feel comfortable. They can show where they go to coffee shop or restaurants or bar, anywhere. But my hope is hopefully everything will quickly cover end of the year, honestly. Yeah. But before I, actually, before I end it, um, I remember you have a product that you started producing. Um, this product, why, how did you go about in producing this product? Because um, can you tell us a little bit about it and why you sure. decided to make a product for hair and skin? Yeah, so I say on the beginning, so my family always been a farmer. They were producing for hazelnut, just a raw product. We sell it to a local wholesalers and the government as well. I still be doing in nineties or three generation. So when I start hairdressing, I always look into products. I was reading all the ingredients, checking everything, what's the behind it, which is my brand next to me now. So I was looking like what is things always I'm up to that. And also I've been researching a lot of productions, what I can do, my clients, what because I'm the main person recommending for the people the hair and skin right if you don't have a right uh, i'll say like your skin is not delivering you right and your hair is not going to be well mm -hmm. so i was always going to hair shows and and cosmetic shows so then there is no hazelnut oil or there is nothing about what the hazelnut they made it mm -hmm. and then after a while and then i'll find myself i'm allergic to chemicals so many as I saw with like eczemas and stuff from the chemicals, then that's where I come up. I can deliver it with the, my best liquid gold, or I call them hazelnuts. Is that is that it? Is that the is that the body cream? Because the one I have is for the hair. Yeah. So one is for this one for hair and body. This is different compared to other oils in the market. They say hair oil, but you can't really use your body. But mine is yes because there is nothing there you can use your hair and body yes yeah it's a multiple years and then i've got shampoo and conditioner mask and face and neck no one talk about neck actually we need to focus our neck as well so which is this one i'm using as well that one yeah. and yeah. Someone who wants to buy the product how do they go about to find it so they're in online and our salon we saw as well. And will be Nete Porter and Harvey Nickers. Okay. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyone who wants to buy it could get it online at your website, I presume? Yes, yes. Um, Adam Oga dot, dot UK. Then they yeah. could go to, yeah, come to your beautiful hair salon at, in Knightsbridge. Yeah. They, um, they could come there and they could buy the hair product or they could go to um, very soon, hopefully, we have it at, you have it in Netta Porter and have a Nichols, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. And I'm so glad that um, we talked about the product because I've been using it and I've definitely found a massive difference. I want to be coming to you to, you know, have show our audience a little bit more about the life, you know, life conversation with you. Sure. So especially when they out there out there in having a course thank, thank you, you so much, Adam, for having this time i know how busy you are and i do not thank want you to so you. much thank you so much thank you thank you making this time for us and you have a wonderful day thank again you. thank you hopefully see you very soon absolutely thank you yep.